As we begin, I need you to know something really, really important. We want you to be successful. So as, uh, as we're going through the class, and this was something that, that's a little bit different when we're on, on the video over the internet, because I can't actually see your faces. Um, but one of the things that we did in class that was really, really fun is if we saw somebody with the cocked puppy dog head, like, what are you talking about? Um, that, was a, that was a time that we stopped and we went back. And so one of the nice things about, uh, at this point, we're taping this presentation uh, well after we did the, uh, all the presentations in the field. So we have a great sense of what worked and what didn't, where we needed to slow down and where we needed to go fast. So uh, we'll apply that to all of our learning today. Sound good? Great. Now it's time to use this or a pencil. Um, I'll use this, of course. This is a, a whiteboard marker. We're going to draw a diagram of a network. This is our hypothetical library network, um, but this will help, under, help you understand the components, the things that deliver data services to your library. Um, this will apply to a lot of different situations. What's really nice is that this simple network diagram that we're going to draw together actually can scale. We talked about scale earlier in the, in the program. This actually can scale to um, larger, more complex networks. All networks that we work with have these same basic components. So I hope you're ready to begin. The other uh, thing to remember is that the network diagram is not really an optional thing. Some people may tell you that it's optional. Actually, this is your best chance of troubleshooting uh, having a written uh, description. And you'd be shocked at how many places in the country, and I mean in the country, do not have a, a written diagram of their network. A lot of times our folks will say, I've got it all up here. That's not good enough. We actually need to put things on, on paper or in a written form so that uh, many people can understand it. Uh, earlier we talked about collaboration and how important that is to IT work. We need more than one head and one, more than one set of eyes on things to make it work. So this is one of those ways of getting things out of one head into uh, the, the hearts and minds of many, many, many. So we'll begin now. We're going to start with something that's actually very complex. Um, but we can draw it very simply. And this is the cloud. This is called the internet. I'm going to uh, use a, uh, a shortening of that, uh, calling it INET. That's a very common uh, way to uh, refer to the internet. Um, it's really a convenient way, even though it's become kind of a marketing term, of course, the cloud. It's actually a convenient way to talk about something very complex. There's tons and tons of connections in the internet. I'm going to draw some of those connections up here, not all of them, because I do not have a small enough Sharpie or the time. Uh, no one has the time to do this. We, um, we have what's, what are called different nodes on the internet. So I'm going to draw them with this, this pink marker here. And a node can be just about anything. Let's just say this node up here is Amazon.com, for instance, or Google.com. Uh, this one is a router, let's say. There's lots and lots of these different servers and these different routers on the internet. Um, your internet service provider actually has a node on the internet as well. And so we're going to uh, peg off that because that node to the internet is our, um, our, our access point. From here, we're going to draw just a little line to show the connection uh, for our, our ISP. We're going to pretend that our, our uh, ISP is, is any one cable. Okay, any one cable is not a real company, but this is our hypothetical network. So we're going to say any one cable. And they're really cute because they've put a question mark after their name um, to make it more marketable. So don't get confused. Okay, any one cable is actually their marketing uh, a term. <laughs> Just kidding, we're just going to call it any one cable here. We'll erase that. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is that uh, in our class, we want to do things in real time. And when we make a mistake, we actually want to stop and fix it and fix it together. That's something that, that uh, is very important when it comes to technology is uh, not being the sage on the stage, but actually working on things and making sure that it's right. So having, having something accurate is much more important than having an awesome uh, but wrong opinion on how you should do something. So Anyone Cable is our ISP, they are our internet service provider. And we talked about ISPs a little bit earlier uh, in, the, in the program. Um, our uh, connect speed, we're going to use the FCC's definition of broadband. Our connect speed is going to be 25 megabits a second. And we, uh, if we were uh, actually making a real uh, drawing here, we, what we would also do is put like phone numbers, a person's name, a contact information. But we really want to know what the, the, the speed of our internet connection uh, is right here. We also want to know 
the quality or the, the, the media that's used to deliver our internet connection. So in this case, we are going to say that this is a, a cable connection, um, a cable company. So using coax cable to deliver this connection. So this is cable. I'm going to show you another dividing line too because now we're going from things that are inside our building to outside our building. So everything that is above this line here is equipment or stuff that's outside of our building. So I'm just going to write outside and pointing down are things that are inside our building. And you've probably seen where this stuff comes inside your building uh, and you've messed with it before. Uh, this is also called the service entrance and it's not where we have deliveries <laughs> coming in and out. It is where our internet connection and our, our other data services come into the library. Inside our next step here, we will have a box of some sort. In this box, we are going to call our cable modem. Modem is actually a little bit of a misnomer, so I'm going to put modem in parentheses because the modem was that thing, remember, uh, way back, we can all sing the modem song. <laughs> boop, boop, and we connected, right? Um, so, but the name stuck. What it is, it's the box that converts um, or, or is able to communicate to our internet service provider and to provide that network service in, in, into our library. So that's our, that's our cable modem. Our next device is really, really interesting. This is going to be our router. And I'm going to show you our, uh, our, our router in, a, in uh, actually right now, if I may. I'm going to pick up our, our router. This was the class router that we used. This is a, um, a consumer grade router. And we did that on purpose because many libraries uh, only have this sort of thing. And it's also surprisingly complex inside. There's lots of configuration options that we'll get to later when we're configuring our, our routers ourselves. So I'm going to write that a little bit clearer because I want you to be able to read it. Isn't that nice? If you can't read my drawings up here, remember that you can always refer to your, your notes and the slides that we have for you. Now our router is kind of special. It also has another function that's very, very important. And this function is a Wi-Fi access point. So we're going to draw that as a little radio station antenna. And of course, the Wi-Fi access point serves wireless devices. Uh, we'll talk about those in a, just a moment. Generally, also connected to the router is something that we call a switch. This is a network switch. And sometimes it looks like this here. Um, it can be a rack mounted, it can be a smaller uh, a device, but the idea is that it, it uh, uh, helps us distribute the network to our devices inside the library. So for instance, using my last color that I have here, um, we can say that the connection going to this switch port is our PCs, our, 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 our PCs. Um, we're going to say just one PC here, but that re actually represents all the PCs that we have in the library. Another switch port, let's say that that's going to our printers. So I'll draw printers up there. And um, there can be other devices connected here as well. Sometimes we have scanners. Sometimes we have servers. But most of these things are connected at this point in the switch. We also have devices that our Wi-Fi network are serving. And we can draw those just generically. Remember, um, it, there's so many devices. We were talking about the scalability of things coming up and, and lots of different devices wanting to access our Wi-Fi networks. So there's lots of stuff. So let's just call them endpoints instead of uh, trying to call them PCs and laptops and stuff. But they certainly uh, involve things like the, the laptop, uh, things like cell phones. Even though cell phones do not have antennas anymore on the outside, we'll draw this one with an antenna. Um, there's uh, tablet computers. And uh, these days, as, as of when we recorded this, there's even things like a watches, Apple, the Apple Watch and a few others will communicate directly to the Wi-Fi network. And so at this, uh, at this basic level, we have depicted a simple network diagram that actually can scale. In more complex networks, the function of the router um, can be duplicated for different sites. For instance, every site needs its own router. So you can just imagine this. Um, uh, being uh, spread out in that direction, more routers with more switches uh, attached to those in large networks. 
even inside of a single library, sometimes we need multiple switches. And so we can also add switches to accommodate the needs that we have there. One thing I want to point out in doing a network diagram like this is we're focusing on functions of, of network equipment. Something that can get kind of confusing is uh, often uh, different functions are combined within a single unit. Uh, that can be confusing because it kind of looks like a black box then. You don't know exactly what's going on. Uh, for instance, with our router for the class, this actually combines two important functions. One is the routing function, which is the network traffic uh, direction uh, function of this device as well as the AP or access point, Wi-Fi access point. Those are actually two different functions that are provided by this equipment. Um, it's important to map them out that way because in other, with other equipment actually those could be separate pieces of gear. So think in terms of function first and, uh, and not be thrown by uh, what's going on. In fact there are some things that will combine your modem, your cable modem, your router, and your Wi-Fi access point into one box. We're drawing them separately here so that you understand these functions are uh, completely different things uh, and they perform different operations. At this point, your head might be exploding because there's been so much information coming in. If that's the case, this is a good time to just pause the course, take a break. Uh, go outside, do a little exercise, have a snack, stretch, but do something that helps give yourself a cognitive break and even take a nap. A nap might be just the thing right now. Um, it, uh, it'll help you absorb the information and we just want to encourage you to take care of yourself as you're learning new information. <music>